Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Leon. In this video, I'm going to show you how to wire up and configure a 1-inch OLED screen for the GP2040CE platform. The screen I'm currently showing as well as the DuPont wires are available on Amazon.com and I'll link those in the description box. Make sure that the DuPont wires that you order are female to female since the GP2040C board I'm currently using is the Raspberry Pi Pico board which is pre-soldered and the screen itself is pre-soldered. The four wires that you need to connect to each other are going to be the VCC, the ground, the SCL, and the SDA. And I'll show you how to connect those. The VCC wire is the power wire and that goes to our VBUS pin. One caveat is that if you are connecting a USB pass-through, as I mentioned in my previous video, you're going to need to hook up the VCC wire from the USB pass-through and hook it into the VCC and then take those wires and bridge them to where they, they, they connect in a single wire to the VBUS pin. I can confirm that I've used the USB pass-through and the screen together and they work perfectly. Our next three pins are going to be ground, SCL, and SDA. Those are going to be on the opposite side of the board. And you'll see that on pin one, 1 and 2 are SDA and SCL. And the ground wire is right next to it. So for reference, we're going to follow the, the, how the wires are, are colored. So our red wire is going to be our VCC wire from our screen it's going to go to the VBUS pin our next wire is our ground wire which is the blue wire that blue wire is going to go to, to our ground pin here our SCL which is our brown wire is going to go to the OLED SCL which is pin 2 and then our SDA wire is going to be pin 1 at the top and and that's going to be colored in green. So once you set that up, you'll be able to plug your board into a computer and then the screen will actually power up and show. What's really cool about this board is I want to show you one where I have it functioning. It shows the, the actual display. So it shows my inputs here. And this is a Hori Hayabusa controller I made from a treasure box. It also shows the mode that you're in. So you see where it says PS4. PS4 means that it's in PS4 mode. Also too, you'll see there's a D there. That means that I'm in directional input mode or in D-pad mode. And I can change that with my three-way rocker switch here. When I switch it over to the left side, it switches from the D-pad to the left stick. And when I switch it onto the right side, it switches from the left stick to the right stick. And lastly, you'll see that it says SOCD in. That means that when I press opposite inputs, it'll have an, a neutral uh, resolution. What's really cool about the board as well is that when you unplug and plug it in, you can have a custom splash screen as well as other options. And I'll show how to get to that and configure that in the second part of the video. In this part of the video, I'm going to be showing you how to access the display configuration settings. You do so by holding down the S1 or start button while plugging the controller into your computer's USB port. From there, you're going to type in 192.168.7.1, but you'll notice that on the screen itself, once you're in web configuration mode, you'll see the address in case you forget. Type that in and press enter. And then once you do that, you'll see the Welcome to GP2040CE Web Configurator. From there, you're going to go to the Configuration menu and then go to Display Configuration. From there, you want to check a few options. First, you want to make sure that the hardware options are enabled. The I2C block is default, or you can set it how it's set here, where it's I2C0 and I2C address, which is 0x3c but this should already be set as default from here we're going to go to the screen options and you can flip the display you can invert the display and you can change 
the power management settings as well. Lastly, we have layout options and I set mine as thickness on both sides since I'm using a leverless controller, but there are a number of different options here on both sides. So I would just play around with this and see which one that, that you actually like. And to get the splash screen to work, you're gonna go where it says splash mode, you're gonna go to where it, it's enabled. Then from here, there are two other options called splash duration and display saver timeout. Splash duration means that the number of seconds that the splash train is going to appear when you first plug the controller in. I set mine as five seconds and you set it as zero, it'll always stay on. And the second option says display saver timeout. I set mine as zero, so there that way it stays on all the time. But if you set it for ever long time, depending on how long the screen is inactive, it'll turn off the actual display itself. One important thing is that you want to make sure that the screens that you use are models SSD1306, SH1106, and SH1107. The one in the description box actually works and it's one of those. To get the splash screen to work correctly, it has to be a 128 by 64 resolution image. As of right now, a GIF or video file does not currently work, so it has to be an image. And if you can't find an actual image, uh, GP2040C has a, a, a community section that will let you download and use some of these um, splash screens. So I'll download this one here, the Street Fighter Alpha 3 one. And I'll show you how to change it. So at the bottom, there's, there's a, a choose file option. From here, we're going to just take that Street Fighter Alpha 3 splash screen and we're going to change it and then we're going to hit save and once you do that you'll be able to see your splash screen show up now one more thing I want to go over uh, there actually is a way to see your input history and you do that by going to add-ons but of course make sure that whenever you change the settings here that you go to save I I'm not going to save it because I, I don't want to change my splash screen right now but I'm going to go to add on add on configuration and here I'm going to show you that there's a way to actually show uh, the, the input history so at the bottom it says input history you can actually see the input history that you're putting in so this is great if you want to practice electrics or practice moves that are just frames once you're done with the add on configuration menu make sure you go to the bottom and hit save Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you found it helpful, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more content. You have a blessed day. You take care.